Welcome back. All right, number 14, select the box in each row. Okay, this would be like a drag and drop or like you could be like you highlight stuff or whatever on the test itself. So we're just gonna make it work. So we'll just do arrows. First fraction is 42 over 63. I'm gonna put that in the calculator and then I'm gonna find out what decimal it is. So here's how we do this. There's a couple of ways. The easiest way is to just put it in as a division problem. 42 divided by 63. Because remember, the fraction bar means division, okay? So I've got 0.6. Now remember, this is one of those weird ones where the seven on the end is not really a seven, it's still a six. This is just the calculator's way of rounding up. So I've got 0.6 repeating. So that means that this 42 over 63 is this. It's the 0.6 with a bar over it because the bar, remember the bar means it's repeating. Next one, 30 over 48. So again, I'm just gonna put that in the calculator. So 30 divided by 48. That's gonna give me 0.625. That is a terminating decimal. All right, so there we go. Uh, 36 over 60 is 0.6. No bar, it's just the literal terminating decimal. And then obviously 57 over 90 better be this one, but let's check. 57 divided by 90 is going to be 0.6. Now again, the three repeats, which is why the bar only goes over the three. All right, nice. 15, commutative property of multiplication. So first of all, we have to know we're doing multiplication. It's multiplication. A lot of you might choose C because that looks like the commutative property. It is the commutative property, but that's not of multiplication. That's of addition. I'm telling you the test is going to have a question just like this. Please be careful. C is not the answer. The answer is B. Remember, commutative is when I have A times B equals B times A. That's the commute, right? The commutative property basically just says I have two things and I'm switching the order. That's it, okay? So that's commutative. Number 16 is the associative property. So you knew that was coming. Associative property of multiplication is when I have three things and two of them are in parentheses, but then on the other side, I've got those same three things, but the other two things are being parenthesized, which is not a word, I made it up, right? So let's see which one does the same thing. That's commutative property of multiplication, so that doesn't work. B is like the simplification, right? Because I've got this, which is great, but then they did six, so that's not good. So that doesn't work either. So it's gotta be C because we know that something is gonna be correct here. Three times four times one is the same as three times four times one. Parentheses are done in different places. Done deal, right? Number 17, John borrowed 315.25 or $315.25 from his mom. He promised to pay her back over seven months. He's gonna give her equal payments each month. So that means we're just gonna do a very simple division problem because if he owes this total back to her, right, he's gotta pay that in seven months, so we're gonna divide. So we're gonna do 315.25 divided by seven. Now remember we're talking about money. So the way that we write this is to be very, very careful. 315.25 divided by seven, okay. He can't possibly owe this kind of money every month. He couldn't because there's way too many decimals here. So we're gonna have to round it. So it's certainly $45. Now, there's two decimal places in money. So this is gonna round up to zero four. And we know it's gonna be a four because the last number here or the next number here is a five. We round up on five. So this is gonna be $45.04, okay? Number 18, which decimal is non-repeating? So non-repeating means terminating. All right, well, this 0.444 with the dots, that means it's gonna keep repeating. It's no good. This bar, well, this bar is wrong because we don't repeat the zero, but it, the bar still means that one six is gonna go on forever, so that doesn't work. C is the answer because it stops, it terminates. And D is clearly not the answer because we know C was the answer, but D also repeats, so that's not gonna work. So C is my answer, okay? Number 19, kindergarten class is making day animals for a play. Making day animals for a play. That doesn't make sense. The teacher has two and three-fourths gallons of clay. Oh, clay. This is supposed to be clay. Goodness gracious. The teacher has two and three-fourths gallons of clay. Each child needs one-sixteenth of a gallon to make an animal. Okay? How many children can make a clay animal? Okay. So the teacher has two and three-fourths gallons, but each child needs one-sixteenth. So if the total is two and three-fourths, I have to divide that by each individual. So total divided by the individual, and that's gonna give me an answer. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. So I've got my mixed number second, ND, two and three fourths. I'm gonna divide that by 1 16th. I'm gonna get 44. That means 44 kids can make clay animals, or <laughs> day animals. That wasn't funny.
<laughs> Moving on. All right. Number 20. Okay, what is the value of the expression shown? I'm putting that in the calculator. I don't even know what we're talking about here. 35 minus parentheses negative 110 parentheses divided by 5 times 2. Double check to make sure you put it in correctly. I know I did. Answer C. Again, if you had more time, you would make sure and you would be very, very precise. Like, oh, okay, I know that's negative. I know that's a times. I know that's a. So just be precise, okay? What is the value of the expression shown? Why is this the same problem twice? Yikes. No one told me. Literally the same thing twice. It's ridiculous, okay? Number 22, simplify the following expression. All right, well, calculator. I can't believe that's the same question twice. How come y'all didn't tell me? Right? Negative 8 plus 15 divided by negative 3. I got a negative 13 here. Again, if I had more time, I'd double check. <coughs> Number 23. I'm really upset that there's two of the same problem over there. Very upset. Okay? Putting this in the calculator. Exactly how I see it. 4 times negative 2 minus parentheses, negative 80, parentheses, divided by 5, times negative 8, negative 136. Again, I'm going to say it a million times. If I had more time, I would make sure that I got this right, okay? But I don't have a lot of time on the video. Find the quotient. The quotient, remember, is the answer to a division problem. Putting this in the calculator. Right? Second ND, negative 1 and 4 fifths, divided by parentheses, negative 5 sixths, parentheses, 54 over 25. Okay, so that's going to be a fine answer. It didn't say how to enter your answer, but that's going to be fine because it doesn't say, okay? Um, there is a mixed number, though, so you're right out there. You're right for those of you that are like, uh, but Dramas, it, it, it is a mixed number. You're right. I'm wrong. So let's make it a mixed number. Second, negative, second, X10N. The answer is 2 and 4 over 25. My bad, yo. Okay. Last one, number 25. Which of the expressions equals negative 5? Okay. Negative 5. So this is a negative 30 over 6. Well, you know what? If you're, if you're concerned that you don't know, put it in the calculator. So I've got a negative 30 over 6. That's negative 5. So that, that's good. Negative 30 over negative 6. Well, I could put that in the calculator. But I know a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Well, that's not positive 5, so that doesn't work. 30 over negative 6. That's going to give me negative 5 because I only have one negative here. Put it in the calculator to see. And then here, I've got negative 30 over 6. That's also negative 5. So the only one that doesn't work is 2. So make sure you select the right answer. 1, 3, and 4. Okay? Part C. That's it. Is that it? That is it. Have a great day. See you.